Rock and blues music fans have been mourning today one of Ireland's legends, Rory Gallagher. The Donegal-born guitarist died in a London hospital last night at the age of 47. Rory had had a successful liver transplant eight weeks ago, but complications set in, triggered by a series of chest infections. Ivan Little now looks back at the man and his music. That's all right, Mama. That's all right with you. Rory Gallagher, a year ago, in one of his last recordings for UTV's Rock in the North series. A very different face from the fresh-faced youngster who first burst onto the Irish music scene over 30 years ago. He was born in Ballyshannon. He was raised in Cork. But Rory Gallagher was the man who helped kickstart the blues in Belfast. And that was the launch pad for the music in all of Ireland. In the late his blues band Taste to the North and lived here for a spell while he reshaped the group, bringing in Ulster musicians John Wilson and Charlie McCracken. My times in Belfast are like ultra clear to me. I made so many friends there and had a great time. We, we shared a magical thing that most musicians never get the chance to experience in their lives, where, where people can go on and just do it. And uh, I mean, I'll never forget that. That was probably the greatest uh, one I've had in, in my life so far. It's a very, it's a very good band, an uh, innovative band, I think, at the time. And um, I think we all got a lot of, uh, a lot out of Taste, really, the, the three members of the band. Taste split up in 1970 after establishing themselves as a major force in England and Europe. Rory, backed again by Ulster musicians, this time Jerry McAvoy and Wilger Campbell, set out once more under the Rory Gallagher Band title. He would sell 20 million records across the world. Well, did you ever... Well, did you ever wake up with them bullfrogs on your mind? At the height of the troubles, as frightened musicians gave Ulster a wide berth, Rory stayed loyal to local audiences, returning at least once a year for what became legendary concerts. Rory felt that it was Belfast that accepted his music first. He played in a show band in Cork, then he came to Belfast, he formed taste, he found a place that could appreciate his music. And this was really, while his home may have been Cork and his birthplace may have been Donegal, the birthplace of his music was Belfast. Rory's pilgrimages back home inspired many youngsters, including Lisburn's Vivian Campbell, now guitarist with the world-famous Def Leppard. I went down there and was just blown away. I was amazed, you know, in awe. <laughs> and still to this day, he's like my one of those. I got to meet him after the show, shook his hand, and so I went out and bought all his records. Rory Gallagher, who loved nothing more than touring, had been off the road for several years due to illness. In April, he was admitted to hospital for a liver transplant, but never fully recovered and died last night. By a tragic irony in Belfast, where the old Maritime Club, where Rory first played is but a memory in College Square, old friends had been gathering signatures for a Get Well Soon card. Unfortunately, I was waiting for a few other people to come and sign it, and then I rang up this office and there was nobody there, so I didn't want to send it over. And I'm sorry to say I didn't get it off to him, but I think he knew how people in Northern Ireland felt about him. Music fans in Belfast are already planning a concert in memory of Rory Gallagher, but it's the man's own words, and perhaps more importantly, his music, which provide the most fitting epitaph. I don't want to be by George, and I don't want to be Brian Ferry. I, I want to be me, and I, my idols really are people like Led Belly and uh, Woody Guthrie, and Sean did as well. Right on. Your home. Rory Gallagher, as we'll remember him. Now let's join Gillian uh, again for the rest of the Yesterday, days. at the age of 47, memorial services are to be arranged in Cork, Dublin and London. Michael O'Kane reports. Well, did you ever... Well, did you ever... Well, did you ever wake up with them bullfrogs on your mind? Cork in the early 1960s was when Rory Gallagher woke up to find guitar playing on his mind. Barely in his teens, he bought a Bashto Fender Stratocaster from which he carved own sound, making him one of the finest white bluesmen of the modern era. At one stage I wanted to be a footballer and a cowboy like any other kid, but 
really. I mean, since the age of six, I mean, I wanted to be a musician. But Rory did realise part of that childhood cowboy dream. He was considered the last of Rock's outlaws. He constantly refused to go commercial, often saying his biggest fear was having a number one single. Rory Gallagher's high-volume, stripped-down blues rock earned him worldwide success. He sold nearly 30 million records and at one stage declined an offer to join the Rolling Stones. Instead, he stayed loyal to his musical roots, often obscure black American blues artists such as Blind Boy Fuller, whose songs he'd rearrange and blast out in his own unmistakable style. I like cherry brandy, my baby shoe like gin. His crawling card of denim jacket, flares and a lumberjack shirt was a familiar sight to Irish audiences to whom he remained immensely loyal over the years. Shy and unassuming, Roy said he envisaged himself growing old like one of his musical heroes Muddy Waters, constantly touring into his 70s. But sadly, at the age of 47, Rory Gallagher died long before he could assume that mantle of elder statesman of the blues.